almost everybody's met someone in their life that they found to be, I don't know, there's something about them that's unsettling. Um, there's just something about them that you you can't really put your finger on it, but you just know there's something there's something wrong about them. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, some cases in which people claim that they encountered people that were just really strange, like there was something odd about them. Um, in some cases, the people were you know, were left kind of feeling disturbed, while others, they were downright terrified. In the first case, the witness was a flight attendant. She wasn't exactly sure of the exact date, but she did recall that it happened sometime in the mid to late 1980s. The incident happened while on board a flight from Palm Springs, California to Portland, Oregon. The attendant, who had been employed by the airline for 29 years, requested UFOs Northwest, who took the report, not to disclose the name of the airline. She feared repercussions if the name got out. She recalled that on this occasion, the flight had made a non-stop in San Francisco, in which three passengers boarded the plane. One was a man, estimated to be about 30, the other a boy of about 8 years old, and another a middle-aged man. There was something strange about them, especially the 30-year-old. He had piercing eyes and an unusual forehead. Almost right away, the attendant, as well as other crew members, were unsettled by them. Another odd thing she noticed, the three boarded without any carry-on luggage and were dressed in what she took to be Sears Roebuck work clothing. Not long after the flight took off, the 30-year-old man seated in 23D asked the attendant the mass and velocity of the aircraft. She found this to be quite bizarre. Later, while ordering food and drinks, the man seemed to not understand what she was talking about, as if he didn't know what food was. He eventually picked the food he wanted after the attendant ran down a list of available items. As the flight carried on, the 30-year-old struck up a conversation with another passenger who was seated ahead of him. Desperate to hear what was being said, the flight attendant sat by someone who she knew and didn't really like. She recalled that the man asked unusual questions and seemingly everything that was said to him, he said to the other two passengers seated beside him, the 8-year-old and the middle-aged man. It should be noted that at no point in the flight did the two other passengers ever utter a word. At some point, the man in 23D left to use the bathroom. When he returned, the attendant approached him and asked him how old he was. He did not respond to that question, but he told her that he had been to other planets. His bizarre response would leave the flight attendant baffled. Once the flight landed in Portland, the flight attendant deplaned along with the other passengers. The man from 23D approached her. What he asked her would leave her deeply disturbed. Why did you sit by someone that you hated? He asked. It was at this moment the attendant got the sense that the strange man had been inside her head, reading her thoughts. Before departing, the man told her one more thing. You asked how old I am. I am light years old. As strange as this statement was, the attendant was quite convinced that it was not a joke and that he was completely serious. She watched as this man, along with his two associates, climbed into a limousine with darkened windows and left. Given how they were dressed, she found it odd that they would be leaving in a limousine. Speaking to other crew members, she discovered that they too were deeply disturbed by these three. The attendant concluded that she had never experienced anything similar to this incident, not before or since. In St. Paul, Minnesota, a man named Mason, his last name was not disclosed, claimed that he encountered some very strange people one night while hitchhiking. He recalled that he was out and his girlfriend was supposed to pick him up, but she had not arrived. He decided to walk home. He guessed it would be a good four to five hour walk. As he was heavily involved in cross country running at the time, he was regularly doing three hour walks, so he assumed a couple hours would not make much of a difference. After walking for several hours, he realized that he had made a bad decision. I was completely lost and I wasn't prepared for it. I was wearing Converse, so I was not in the right state of mind. So I start walking and I don't know where the hell I am and it gets really dark. So at this point, my feet hurt so bad where I can't, you know, I just stopped walking. Mason decided to hitchhike the rest of the way. He was surprised when the first car that passed him actually stopped. 
He found this odd, but was happy to take the ride. There was a couple in the car, a man and a woman. He immediately gave directions, and that's when it started to get weird. So I told them this way, that way, whatever, but they refused to talk. They just sort of nodded their head, you know what I mean? So I was like, I was talking to them and I said, you know, you guys are like angels. Thank you so much. But then they turned their head like synchronized at the same time. You know what I mean? It was synchronized, like exact. Kind of like a fast, you know, kind of like you ever see a bird, how it turns his head really quick. But they looked at each other right away and then I realized they looked the exact same. Like they looked exactly the same. I could only see the side of their faces at this point, but then they looked forward again. I would say one was like a female version of the same thing. It was like creepy to me, but in my mind I refused to believe what I was seeing. When they eventually arrived at their destination, Mason found himself overcome with fear. When I got out of the car, I didn't even look. I was like in a panic because I didn't want to. It was the most bizarre thing I have ever... It was almost like they didn't have a face. And they were super pale, you know what I mean? It was really messed up, and usually I'm not one to believe in the paranormal before that. Mason claims that at no point did these people ever speak to him. They wouldn't talk at all. They just... But it was weird because as soon as I said angels, they looked at each other real quick, almost like a bird would, you know, really fast. I could tell where their eyes should have been. When you see somebody from the side of the face, you can at least see like an eyelash or whatever, but it didn't look like they had anything. They were dressed the same too. I got out and I was really, really creeped out. I have read other cases in which hitchhikers were picked up by individuals who behave strangely and who seem to be anything but human. As well, Mason seemed bothered by the fact that they appear to have no faces. In a later video, I will run down some more cases in which people claim to have encountered these faceless entities, sometimes driving. For now, I want to finish off with a case that first appeared on Lon Strickler's site, Phantoms and Monsters blog, in 2010. The event happened in 2005 in Washington, D.C. The witness, a former postal delivery worker, was left terrified after having a run-in with some very strange men. He recalled how one day he was standing outside of one of the buildings he was to make delivery at. He had stopped to eat an apple. He could not find a trash can, so he tossed it on the ground. Upon entering the building, he was confronted by the head of security for the building. He was angry about his littering. When asked how he knew about the apple, the security officer informed him that the premises was under total video surveillance, including not only all sides of the building, but even the grassy areas around it. It was then that I suddenly realized this building had really unusually tight security. Even when I went inside to deposit the mail, the mail room was open to me, but the rest of the building was inaccessible. I could only go into the mail room, deposit the mail, and leave. I had to ring a buzzer to be let into the building each time I delivered. A few weeks later, the witness was making his usual delivery to the building. That's when he observed something absolutely bizarre. As I was nearing the building, I saw three figures crossing the street on their way towards the building. At first glance, I thought they were normal, but as I looked closer, I was shocked at how strange they were. They were extremely thin, and they didn't walk by putting one leg in front of the other, but sort of waddled by moving their whole bodies from side to side, lifting one foot off the ground, then the other foot in a sort of whole body, side to side waddle. The witness claims that they did not walk like a normal person. It was as if the joints in their legs were unmovable, completely stiff, not unlike a pair of scissors. Interestingly, their odd walk wasn't the only thing he found to be disturbing. But as strange as this was, this was not what frightened me. What frightened me was that they were absolutely thin. It was like they were as flat as a set of clothes that had been ironed. Their faces and bodies were entirely flat, no contours. The nose did not jut out, nothing. And they were also extremely thin. The best I could describe it is if you saw a suit hanging from a clothes hanger. That would be about the same thickness. It was like no thickness at all, just clothes hanging from a hanger. All three were dressed in black suits. They all had black sunglasses. 
The witness watched as the three men walked up to the building and pressed the buzzer. After a few seconds, they entered the building. I was absolutely scared shitless as I had just been about to enter that very same building. I really wasn't sure what to do, but I kind of steeled myself and slowly forced myself to ring the buzzer and enter the building, figuring, hey, I might have imagined this. In any case, I should force myself to go through my routine until I can think this thing out. Upon entering the building, things would go from weird to downright terrifying for the witness. When I entered the mail room, there were like 10 normal men standing there just looking at me. It was really intimidating. They asked me if I had seen anything. I was kind of speechless for a second, not knowing how to respond. And then one of them walked right up to me from the side and from slightly behind me. I could tell it was one of the same types that I had seen crossing the street. It walked right up to me and I was afraid to turn my head to the side and look at it. I am very scared just typing this right now, remembering it. It didn't say anything, it just got right up close to me and I had a feeling of fear so intense. I felt as if my heart had just frozen. It was going to fall out of my body onto the ground. Again, they asked me, did you see anything? What did you see? I just shook my head and stammered. No, I didn't see anything. The man admits that he was beyond frightened and there was no way that they could not have known that he was terrified. I thought they might hold me and not let me go, but finally they said, okay, leave now. The MIB that was to my side and a little behind me kind of took a step back to make way and I had to steel myself to actually walk past it on my way to the door and I was out of the building. It was the bravest thing I've ever done in my life. Upon returning home, the witness began to run through what exactly happened and what the many encountered possibly were. At the time, I had never heard of the MIB. I had no idea what this thing was or what the government was doing. All I knew was that I was dealing with something far more powerful than me. I thought maybe it was some type of robot and the government was doing test runs on them. But why that would have been in broad daylight, I could not and still do not understand. The witness admitted that he was frightened by the experience. To give you an understanding of how frightening it was, the first thought that came to my mind was that I needed to leave the country to find some way to get the hell out of the country and go somewhere else. But then it occurred to me that if I started to act strangely, they might get suspicious and kill me or something. I realized the best thing I could do was act as normally as possible and pretend nothing happened. Later that week, the man's supervisor at the post office informed him that he had been reassigned to a new route. He found this odd. Apparently, even the supervisor did, too, as he asked him if he had encountered any problems on the route. Certainly, the decision to reassign this witness came from someone higher up the chain. The man stayed on for a little while longer, but eventually quit. He found work in an airport. He remains deeply disturbed by that day. I've never seen any sort of alien or had any sort of unusual life event of any other kind, nor do I believe that there is such a thing as a devil or demons or anything. So I really don't know what to believe now. There is no doubt whatsoever the building was under the control of the government with normal human beings. So were these experimental robots part of a black budget project or something else? The man's sense of terror in their presence, not unlike scores of other reports of UFO witnesses who encounter or who are harassed by strange men in black suits, leads me to wonder if they were in fact the men in black. But if so, what were they doing in that government building? What might have happened to the postal worker had he continued to poke around? If his story is to be believed, then these are questions that we have to ask.